Hi everybody, it's Sophie here and today's video has been inspired by an email we recently received from our sister subscriber, Debbie Cox. And first of all, thank you very much Debbie for sending it in and asking us the question and quite simply the question is, um, is there any hip pads out there that are quite cheap but still give you that very, very hourglass figure? Now the ones I normally wear are these little beauties here, the silicon ones, and they retail at £220 a pair, which is quite expensive. Um, so I was very conscious of the price of them, so I thought, well, why not try and give it a go to make them? So I bought some foam at uh, £22, which is 10% of the 220 the mathematicians amongst us, and set about making these particular hip pads here. So if you want to see how it's done and how they turned out, what they look like when they're worn, please join me after the break. Hello and welcome back. So what you can see here in this stage one is I'm actually wrapping around some standard kitchen cling film and I'm going to be using this as my template material here. So I'm wrapping it around from my female waist and I'm going to take it down to just above my knee. That's stage one of the process. For stage two, what I need to do now is to draw out the profile of my hip and thigh pads here. So I'm taking a standard marker pen, I'm just doing a little line there, the top of my hip, and I'm tracing around what I believe to be the right shape for me. Now this is my left hand thigh pad, or will be. I'm taking it around the knee there, and I'm just gently bringing the curve back up around to my bottom. Give me a full figure shape and back up to it meets where I initially started off at my waistline. That's my left thigh. Now I'm going to turn to my right thigh and I'm going to try and repeat exactly the same process. I'm trying to keep it as even as possible. Around the back and into the bottom of the thighs. Now we've got to remember later on we've got to keep this as thin as possible. Take it around the front and meet it back up again to my initial thigh point. What I decided to do here was to try and find the highest area in my thigh and I put a couple of X's which really when I was trying to cut it out it wasn't really applicable but I thought it was a good idea at the time. Now what I need to do in this stage 3 process here is really cut the cling film down the middle. Be a little bit careful here for obvious reasons. So now, after peeling that off, I've actually got a template for both my left and my right thigh. So next stage is stage four, and this is where I start to cut them out. I started off with my right thigh pad template. I'm just using a pair of standard kitchen scissors here. They are quite sharp. Obviously, put that one aside, and now I'm going to move on to my left hand thigh pad. I'm trying to keep as close to the lines as possible. I'm trying to keep the shapes of the templates even, so they both look roughly the same. The next stage is to grab hold of some foam. I'm making these particular thigh pads out of three inch high density foam. So in stage five, what I'm doing here is just drawing around templates. In this instance, it's my right hand template. Just completing the outline. And now what I've done on this particular example is I've started to chop away I want to cut the profile out just using scissors. Now this is when I should have had the first indication because the scissors were starting even at this very early stage here to hurt my fingers but uh, I did carry on. So 
I've created or put, cut the entire shape out. Now I'm just trimming it away again with the scissors, cutting at an angle towards the center of the hip pad. It's a very slow and tedious sort of job, really. It just takes time and patience. Just keep clipping away. And actually, you can feel the shape as it starts to develop. As you can see here, I'm almost finished. And I just have the scissors at an angle that see. It seems to cover the entire area. You do need a little bit of patience, and as I say, by this stage here, my fingers were really starting to hurt. It took me roughly 20, 25 minutes of chopping away to get to this final sort of shape here. Very thin edges, and it's important we get those edges as thin as possible. And you can see it's quite a good dome shape there as well. Now here is what I call the top tip. Um, I did a bit of a think around, a little bit of research on the net, and I found that the, probably the best way to do it is to grab hold of your kitchen bread knife if you've got one, or a good serrated knife. And believe me, it was a lot quicker, literally sawing away here to get the masses off. And this is what took the time on when I was doing the right hand thigh pad here. You can get this carved in a lot, lot quicker using this bread knife here save probably half the time and an awful lot of pain and frustration. I just finished it off with the scissors just to get the right shape, just trimming it in, trying to keep it nice and thin on the edges again. And I think it's getting it thin on the edges that's the key to this whole project. So there we have it, a left and a right one. I just match them up together, just make sure they're the same and voila. So I decided to use three pairs of dance tights here to compress these foam hip pads. I started off by putting the first left hip pad into position and then sliding the second or the right hip pad into position here. So it's a bit of final tweaking around and pulling them into the correct position. Now the second set of dance tights I put on went on slightly easier and as you can see, hopefully, that they are compressing a little bit more. So I've got the second pair in now, just fiddling around. And finally the third pair, once you slip those on, you can actually see the hip pads forming or flowing a little bit better here. Now for the final look, what I've decided to do, to make sure the lines are correct, is slip into a pair of very tight jeans I have from Primark of all places. And as you can see here, it's compressed the whole of the hip pads very, very well. I think it's quite a luscious, curvaceous look down here actually. What do you think? So there you go. Now, I must admit, when I was putting the hips into place, I thought they were or would appear to be slightly over the top. But um, as I applied the three layers of dance tights, that sort of squashed them into place a little bit uh, more. And then finally put on the stretchy uh, jeans that I got from Primark. I think the final shape was quite flattering and not too over the top. It was, I thought it was rather Kardashian-like as well. And the shape generally all around was, I think, quite pleasing. I'm very happy with the results I've obtained. But you may wish to do them slightly thinner, maybe a two inch or even a one inch high density foam. I would love to see your attempts at it and your pictures. So please feel free to email me at them at sophie at crossdressing-lifestyle.com. I'd love to receive those pictures. Um, so that really concludes. So all that really remains for me to say is thank you very much for watching. Um, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so, it would be highly appreciated. And until the next time, thank you very much and bye-bye.